everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Febri. In today's video, I am going to try and teach you all how I make my own GFX thumbnails for my YouTube videos. Now, I get this requested quite a lot, so I thought I'd try and make as easy as I can a step-by-step -step tutorial. But before we begin, let me just explain to you what thumbnails are. So, thumbnails are images that are used as like a preview picture for your YouTube video, kind of like a book cover. All of these pictures on the screen right now are my thumbnails, so just before you click on my YouTube video, these are thumbnails. And Roblox GFX are like realistic images of high quality Roblox avatars, which is mainly created using a software called Blender, which I am going to be showing you all how to use later in this video. So make sure you guys stay tuned till the end. Now, if you're someone who wants to start YouTube or you are a YouTuber and you want to know how to make Roblox GFX thumbnails, I think it's a really good thing to learn because it definitely does make people click on your videos more when they are high quality. However, that doesn't mean that you need it if you guys prefer taking screenshots like right now on berry avenue and i could just take a screenshot and this could be my thumbnail for a youtube video and that's perfectly fine but for some of you that want to make some high quality gfx thumbnails i'm going to be showing you how to create that in today's video but just so you all know this is how i make my own gfx thumbnails i know there are probably maybe other easier ways to do it but i'm going to show you guys how i make it because i find it a lot easier doing it in my method but if you guys have another method then make sure you guys comment it down below so other people can follow it yeah. It's also important to know that I use a computer to make my pictures and I would also recommend using a computer or a laptop. I wouldn't recommend using an iPhone or an iPad just because Blender and Roblox Studio, I'm not sure if they work on there and you would need quite a high powered device. Anyway, let's stop with the rambling and let's get straight into it. So to start making GFX thumbnails, you will need Roblox Studio, Blender, moon animator plugin and any editing software for the picture now i personally use photoshop but obviously you have to pay for that but there are other ones that you can use so to begin with firstly we are going to download roblox studio which is free to download by the way however you will need to download roblox already so to download roblox studio we're going to go ahead and go on to the roblox website we're going to click the create button right at the top here and then we're going to click create new experience now, once you click that, it's going to open up Roblox Studio. If you don't have it, then it's going to give you the option to download it. So once you have downloaded it, we are now going to open Roblox Studio, clicking that same button. And once Roblox Studio is open, as you can see, it opens up in this page. And usually I click either base play or I will click classic base play. It honestly doesn't matter which one you guys choose. So now that we have clicked base play, as you can see, it's opened up this. And now we're going to move on to the next step, which is downloading the Moon plugin. Now, everything that you need to download will be in the description down below. So I will leave the link to the plugin. As you can see, if I click plugins right here at the top, there is my Moon Animator plugin and my character inserter, which comes along with it. So to get the Moon Animator to plugin, we're going to click on this link here, which is on the Roblox library, and we're going to install it. Once you click install, it will automatically add it to your game. So now when we go back onto the base plate, as you guys can see at the top, we have Moon Animator and we have the character inserter. Now we're going to go ahead and click on character inserter and once you click on that this tab opens up and it says next to player name slash id it has some numbers there now these numbers you will actually find on your roblox profile so if you click onto your roblox profile at the top there are some numbers right there next to users and profile so this is in the url now to find these numbers here you can actually find them on any roblox character's profile now to show you how i'm going to insert it, i'm actually going to go ahead and find amber so i am now on amber's profile and we're going to go ahead and copy her numbers then we're going to go back into studio and paste them into player id we're going to choose r15 and then we're going to click insert and there she is look there's amber i'm also going to add my own character so once again click r15 and insert and there I am. Now you can just move them about using your mouse. And there we are side by side. Now once you have your character into Roblox Studio, you can actually change anything about them. So if I click onto my character and then I click the arrow, that will show all of the components inside my character, including what I'm wearing, what accessories I'm wearing. I can also get rid of some accessories. So if I didn't want my eyelashes, I can go ahead and delete them. And then as you can see, they are removed from my character. 
but you can also go ahead and actually change what outfit you are wearing. Now, I realize that my pants don't really go with my shirt, so I can go ahead and change that. So let's say I wanted to change what pants I was wearing. I can go ahead and find some pants onto the Roblox website. So looking in my inventory, I'm going to see what I'm going to choose. Let's choose the bright blue jeans. Now, once again, at the top is the URL, and we're going to go ahead and copy the numbers right in the middle. And then where it says pants on Roblox Studio, we're going to go ahead and click on that, and we're going to change where the pants template is, and we're going to paste the numbers in there. As you can see, my pants have now changed, and you can do that also with the shirts. And there you go, now I have a nice outfit all complete. Now that we've changed our outfit, if you also wanted to change the face of your character, you can use that using decals. So let's go back onto the Roblox website. We're going to click on decals, any that you may have. And I'm going to select this decal right here, which is like a death face. And once again, we're going to copy the numbers in the URL. Now, once you have those numbers, you can go back on Roblox Studio and we're going to click onto our body. We're going to select down to head, click on the arrow, and then where it says face at the bottom, we're going to paste the numbers where it says texture. And once that has been pasted, as you guys can see, the face has now changed, which is perfect when you're doing thumbnails. However, I like my face beforehand, so I'm going to keep it as that. So now that we have our desired outfit, it's now time to show you guys how we use Moon Animator to actually pose my character, which is the main thing in thumbnails. So what we're going to do is we're going to click onto plugins and we're going to click onto a moon animator right here. Now, once we have chosen that, we can move it to the side so it's not in the way. Then we're going to click file, new animation, and I usually just write in whatever number. So let's write in 12. Then we're going to click item, add item, and we're going to select our character. So just click on your character and click OK. Now that we have selected our character, we can actually click onto individual parts of our body, such as our arms, and we can actually move them. So look, now I can move my arm up and down. I can start positioning my character. I can tilt my head. I also like to move my legs a bit forward. It almost makes your character more doll-like, so it makes it a lot easier for you to position your character. Now, let's say that you wanted to add an item to your character. On the left, you can find the toolbox. You can also find it if you go onto home and click toolbox, but mine is already there. So we're gonna go on the toolbox and we're going to search for a teddy bear. So once you search bear in, there are loads of options. I'm going to choose this one and we can drag it into Roblox Studio. Then we can click home and you can scale it if it's a bit too big. Now, as you can see, it's a bit weird when you're scaling it. Sometimes it scales it a bit too much. So we're going to click model and we're going to untick move and rotate. And that makes it a lot smoother when you are scaling them down. So I'm going to scale it down and position it. I'm going to go ahead and move it using a move tool and put it into my hand as I'm holding it. Very cute. However, the most important part is to make sure that the teddy bear on the right is actually included into your character as though it is one. So we're going to go ahead and click on teddy bear and drag it into Febri. Now it has slightly moved, so I'm going to go ahead and reposition it. Okay, so there we go. Now I have my character and her teddy bear. I think I'm just going to move it so that she's looking at the teddy bear, so I'm going to rotate her face. Okay, perfect. Now we are going to click our character on the right and we are going to right click the mouse and we're going to select export selection. Now this is going to save it as object model files and you can save it anywhere you want. Usually I just save it onto desktop. Now, once we have exported it and saved it, it is now onto the next part, which is downloading Blender. You will find the link to download Blender in the description down below. But once you are on it, we are going to go ahead and download Blender. We're going to agree to the terms and install it. Now, once it is installed, click finish. And then we are going to open up Blender. Now, once you open up Blender, this is what it will look like. You can just click on anywhere apart from the middle part. Usually, I just get rid of that. So just click anywhere else on the screen. We're also going to click on the cube and just press delete. That's always there as well. Now, this is what Blender looks like. It looks complicated, but I promise I will teach you guys how to use this. Now, you use the middle part of your mouse to kind of move around. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on File, Import and wave front, which is the OBJ, which is what the Roblox avatar was saved as. Then you're going to find where your one is and we're gonna click it and import it. Now there is my character as you guys can see on the screen. Even though she does look like a statue, I'm gonna show you guys how we're going to make her look more like a Roblox avatar. Now we're gonna move her by clicking on the arrows on the left and that will give you the option to move her into place. So first of all, make sure you click on the fourth circle on the top right. 
which is called viewpoint shading. Then we're gonna click on this camera icon. We're going to tick ambient occlusion, bloom. Also select down film and click on transparent so that we have a transparent background. Now, once you have done that, as you can see, our character looks a bit strange. So we're gonna click on our character. We're going to select the second to last icon at the bottom. Now, once you have clicked that, you have all of these handles here. We're going to click on the surface arrow so that is out of the way. And then where it says settings and blend mode, we're going to change that to opaque. Now, all of the items we're going to change to opaque. This allows it to no longer be transparent, but more of an object. Now, as you can see, she looks much better except for the lighting. So we're going to click on light. Then we're going to choose sun. Then I usually change the strength down to two. And once you have done that, you can now click on the arrows and you can move the light to where you want it to be. And then the yellow part, I guess, points straight to my character so that she has good lighting. You can also change the color if you wanted a different kind of vibe. You could change all the colors, the darkness, but I like just to keep it simple. So now that we have our character all ready to be exported, the last thing I'm going to show you is how we're going to move this camera tool right here so that we can get a perfect shot of our character to export. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on edit at the top left. Then we're going to choose preferences. Now, once you have chosen Blender preferences, we're going to click on key map and we're going to search in the search bar camera. Now, right here underneath 3D view, as you can see, it says view camera and on the keyboard, it is numpad zero. So once you click on this, you can just choose anything on your keyboard and that will be what you would click on to find the camera. So now when I click zero on the number pad, it goes straight to my camera. So if I click it, I'm on the camera view and if I deselect it, I'm now back here. We're going to go ahead and click on the number that I've chosen and then we are going to select shift and F. This will allow us to move our camera and you can move it using W, A, S or D. And I'm gonna go ahead and go in front of my character, almost like you're a director, finding the perfect shot for a film. Now, just so you know, if you wanted to change the size of your camera, you can click right here, almost just like a printer icon. It's called Output Properties. And if you click on that, it has the resolution X and Y, which means that you can basically change it. So you can make the camera smaller or you can make it larger. Usually I like to keep it the same. So I keep it as 1920 for both. So I'm gonna click on my left-hand side of my mouse just so it stays in place. Then I'm going to go on to render, render image. We're gonna click on image, save as, and you can just save into your desktop as whatever you want to. And then we're gonna save as image. Then you can just click off blender. And now that we are on our desktop, we can see everything that we have. So these two are from studio. These are also the textures that we have. And here is our image made from blender. So this is now a PNG image, meaning there is no background. So now that we have this, I'm going to show you guys how I add this onto Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to open up Photoshop. And as you guys can see on my recent tab, here are all my previous thumbnails that I have made using Studio, Blender, and Photoshop. So I'm going to click New File. Now for YouTube thumbnails, it's also important that you have 1280 times 720. Now once I've selected a blank page, I'm going to go ahead and go onto Desktop. And I'm going to select my PNG character and add her in. Now there she is looking beautiful with her teddy bear. I'm just gonna move her about. Usually when I put into Photoshop, I click on image and I click on auto contrast just so it makes her a bit brighter. I also like to go onto adjustments on Photoshop and click on color lookup and add the free strip look just because it gives her almost like a bit of a tan. As you can see, this is a difference. Then usually I double click my character on layers this opens up the layer style and I can just go ahead and give her some shadow or I can also give her a stroke. So it's almost like a white outline. Now for backgrounds, I can easily go on here, just take a picture of the house. I can take a screenshot. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. Then I will just go onto Photoshop. I will find my Roblox picture down here. I will go ahead and place it into Photoshop, put it underneath my layer, and then just move it about so it fits perfectly. And there we go. There would be my thumbnail. Okay, everyone, there is my step-by-step -step process on how I make my GFX thumbnails. I hope you all enjoyed. If I have left you confused, I'm very, very sorry. Make sure you guys write any questions down below if I missed anything. But hopefully this video includes everything that you guys will need. 
Once again, everything that you need will be in the description down below, including the links to download Blender and Roblox Studio. If you have any questions, please leave it down below. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already. Like this video for more content. Let me know what you guys want to see next. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!